This is Wizard, a brand new Mac desktop application for doing multivariate statistics. It's designed to be fast and easy to use. I'm going to give you a quick demo of Wizard. To start, I click the Import Data button. I'm going to import a survey from 1986. This is from the General Social Survey, administered by the National Opinion Research Center. It asks people about basic demographic information, as well as people's attitudes about various social issues. I can first just inspect the data using the raw data view. If I want, I can also sort this data by any column of interest by clicking on the header. To drill down this data set, I can first use the data filters feature. This presents an iTunes-like interface for looking at particular subsets of the data. For example, if I want to look for people who are married and male, I just select married and male. When I want to see some pictures that summarize the entire data set, I click on summary. From here, I can choose any variable of interest and get a nice picture. For example, if I click on marital status, I get a pie chart of the marital status of all people in the data set. On the left is a pie chart of the people who actually appear in the data set. On the right is a pie chart that applies statistics to tell me about the underlying population. These are the lower bounds of a multinomial confidence interval. The white slices, in essence, represent the amount of statistical uncertainty that there is given the size of the data set. If I increase my confidence level, the sizes of those white slices also increases. If I use a low confidence level, the size of that statistical uncertainty is much smaller. At the bottom I see a bar chart of the same information. I can either view the raw counts, or I can view percentages, or I can view the confidence bounds, which corresponds to the multinomial confidence interval on the right-hand pie chart. For example, according to this analysis, between 53.6% and 58.7% of people in the population that was surveyed is married. With Wizard, I can get similar summaries of any column in the data set. Wizard's very fast, so it takes almost no time to generate these pie charts. If I look at a variable that's really numeric and not category data, I might want to uncheck this box and treat it as numeric data rather than categories. In this case, I'm presented with a histogram instead of a pie chart. This variable is the highest year of school completed, so it makes sense to treat that as a continuous variable rather than a category variable. If I want to see how two variables interact, I simply click one variable on the left and another variable on the right. For example, I can see how education varies by marital status. I have a number of options for viewing how these two variables interact. I can either see a histogram, a visualization of the confidence interval, or a box plot, which shows me the lower quartile, upper quartile, median, minimum, and maximum. At the bottom, a statistical test is performed which tells me whether the two variables are significantly correlated in the statistical test that's performed. In this case, an ANOVA test was performed to see whether the average level of education varies by marital status. The bottom line tells me that it is, with a p-value of less than .001. In this way, I can quickly see the interactions between any two variables. In the case of two category variables, a chi-square test will be performed, and I can see this pie chart broken down by the variable on the right. For example, if I want to look at labor force status broken down by region, simply click labor force status on the left and region on the right, and I can see this pie chart stretched out and broken down by region. Now let's get a little bit more sophisticated. 
I want to try to build a multivariate model that explains one variable as the outcome of a number of explanatory variables. For this example, I'm going to choose political party identification. Before I go any further, I notice that there's a small subset of people listed as other party. I want to exclude them from the analysis. To do so, I'll control click political party ID and click define missing values. I'll say that if the label is equal to other party, I want to treat that data as missing. Now I'm ready to build a multivariate model. To do so, I have to unlock the model builder by clicking on the lock button on the bottom right. Now I have some instructions that tell me how to build a model. I'll select the outcome variable on the left, here the party ID, and check covariates on the right. I'm going to model the party ID as a function of a person's race, the region they live in, their sex, and the amount of education they have. When I'm ready to build a model, I simply click Build Model. I'm now presented with the model inter interface. This shows me a list of coefficients in the model, as well as their standard error. Coefficients which are statistically significant have green bars that are lit up on the right. If I want to see the actual p-value associated with any coefficient, simply right-click the header here and choose p-value. At the bottom is a visualization of the coefficient along with the standard error. The standard error is represented by a gray dashed line and the coefficient is represented by a dark black dashed line. The p-value is represented by the dark area under the curve on the other side of zero. A large p-value, of course, is not statistically significant, but a small p-value is statistically significant. In the model that we've built, we see that education is statistically significant, a person's sex is not, a person's region is, and their race also is. By default, Wizard has chosen an ordered probit model. This assumes that the outcomes are an ordered set. If I want to treat them as an unordered set, I can instead choose a multinomial logit model. This will have a separate set of coefficients for every individual outcome. Because party affiliations can probably be treated as points along a continuum, I'm going to choose ordered probit. If I want to temporarily exclude a variable from the model, I simply uncheck the box next to the variable name. For example, if I want to take region out of the model, I simply uncheck this box. The other coefficients are instantly updated when I do that. If I feel I've left something out of the model that might be important, I can plot the residuals of the model, that is the unexplained variation, against a variable of interest. For example, I can plot them against labor force status. If I think this variable belongs in the model, I simply click Add. Of course, it can be hard to interpret these coefficients without knowing quite a bit of math and being able to work it out in your head. Wizard is here to help. Now I'm going to click the predict button to see what this model actually means. With the predict interface, I can simply fill out the form and get a concrete prediction. For someone who's white, lives in New England, male, with no education, working full time, this model predicts that this person will be a strong Democrat 32.8% of the time. If I want to choose another set of values, I simply use the controls on the right. I can make a black person who lives in the South, who's female, with 12 years of education. According to this model, this person will be a strong Democrat 45.1% of the time. 
I can choose other outcomes to see what the associated percentage is. This person, for example, will be an independent 7.6% of the time. On the bottom right, I see how this outcome varies by the selected variable. For example, I can see how this number varies by education level. In this case, the percent of the time the person will be independent goes from a predicted 4.5% to 9.7%. If I want to keep track of multiple predictions, I use the predictions pane, which is accessible using the button in the top right. For example, I can make two identical input records and simply give them a different level of education. So this person will have eight years of education, and this person will have 12 years of education. I can see the prediction goes from 45.7% to 51%. If I want to go back and adjust the model, I can simply go and click on Model in the toolbar. If I include or exclude variables, it will update the prediction accordingly. That concludes a summary and quick tour of Wizard. There are a lot more features in the program, but I hope this has given you a quick overview of how easy it is to use Wizard to do statistics for yourself and analyze data without relying on a professional statistician.